Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the uh, Texas Revolution, but we're going to focus on the Convention of 1836. So the Convention of 1836 uh, takes place from March 1st to uh, March 17th of 1836. So, um, and there's 59 delegates from across Texas. Um, most of the different uh, regions or county, not counties, but uh, just different uh, uh, sections of Texas are included, although there are some in the far western parts of Texas or in other parts of uh, far eastern parts of Texas that did not get delegates to this convention. Uh, they meet in Washington on the Brazos, uh, currently uh, what is known as a Washington County, um, very close to, the Grimes count, uh, to Grimes County as well. Um, on the Brazos River, why that's which is why it's called Washington on the Brazos. Um, the uh, image in the background is a replica of the building that they would uh, have met in, and it is uh, to scale uh, and placed in approximately the same uh, location. Uh, the delegates that were there. So Richard Ellis is the president of the convention. Uh, elected president of the convention, not president of Texas, just president of the convention. Um, George C. Childress is selected to chair the committee to draft the Declaration of Independence. And uh, he, we, we suspect that he showed up actually with a draft already in hand because the very next day on March 2nd, he brings that Declaration of Independence at, to get to, toward, to the committee and they, or to the convention and they uh, approve it on March 2nd. Uh, some of the, significantly, some of the Tejano delegates that are there, um, Jose Antonio Navarro, uh, he had served in the Mexican legislature, um, Francisco Ruiz, and Lorenzo de Zavala. Uh, Lorenzo de Zavala in particular is of uh, import because he was a very experienced government official in the Mexican uh, government. He had helped to draft or write the Constitution of 1824. He had been a diplomat to uh, a few different countries, France in particular. He was an impresario in Texas. Um, and so he, but he was also um, very upset about the, um, the way that Santa Ana had changed the government from a, a federal system of government to a more authoritarian military uh, dictatorship. And he was uh, opposed to that uh, very much. Uh, and so he uh, is not really welcome in Mexico uh, by the Santa Ana anymore. Uh, now, this image is not of Lorenzo de Zavala. This is of George C. Childress. Uh, in another page, we'll see uh, Lorenzo de Zavala. So the Texas Declaration of Independence, uh, one of the significant things the to know here is that it is modeled after the United after the United States Declaration of Independence. Um, as I said, it was written by George C. Childress. Um, there's three sections to it, similar to the, the, the United States Declaration of Independence, uh, and they um, basically there's a statement of natural rights and a description of what good government is. Uh, that's the first couple of paragraphs or so of the Texas Declaration of Independence. This is what a government should do. This is what it should look like. This is basically what we had under the Constitution of 1824 and we supported. Um, and then it goes through the list of grievances, the list of ways that they believe that the Mexican government and Santa Ana have grieved uh, the, and you know problems that they have with the way the government is now running and working. Um, and so they're basically saying, hey, this is what good government looks like. This is what we were supposed to have. This is what we prom were promised. Now this is what you're doing. And so therefore we are justified, and that's the last statement, last paragraph or so, that says we are declaring independence. So good government does this. Our government is doing this. Therefore we are um, right in declaring independence. We are just in declaring independence. And so it's a, it's kind of an argument. It's an explanation. Uh, some people, sometimes, some have described uh, the United States Declaration of Independence, and, and you could do so similarly with the Texas Declaration of Independence as, as kind of like a breakup letter. Um, the breaking up with uh, your, with the, your mother country in a sense here.
Uh, another significant thing that happens, so they do a lot in these 17 days. Um, not only do they draft a, the Declaration of Independence and, and approve that Declaration of Independence on March 2nd. So March 2nd, is, 1836, is known as Texas Independence Day. It also just so happens to be Sam Houston's birthday. Now, um, one, uh, something of significance here, uh, the Texas Constitution of 1836 is also modeled after the U.S. Constitution. Uh, we're not going to go into all the details of that right now. Uh, it does set up three branches of government, a legislative branch, a judicial branch, and an executive branch which uh, with a president. Um, it uh, promises to protect individual rights. Of course, that does not necessarily, that certainly does not apply to you if you are uh, African American because they were enslaved uh, in Texas. And the Texas Constitution also ensures that slavery was legal. Uh, and so uh, that problem uh, continues through, through Texas um, to be a problem in Texas um, all the way through the Civil War uh, that the slavery will be an issue in Texas. And so that is, is guaranteed by the Texas Constitution. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and then one of the last things they did is they selected leaders. Uh, David G. Burnett was selected as the ad interim. That's a temporary president uh, just during this time while uh, they don't really have time to get a full, um, the government fully set up. Uh, and Lorenzo de Zavala is the ad interim vice president. Uh, he did many things, as we talked about before, helped to draft the Texas Constitution. He was an impresario. He designed an early Texas flag, although some people say this was the first Texas flag. Um, the best notes uh, from the from the convention don't necessarily specify that and don't bear this out. So there's some uh, controversy ever as, as to whether this is actually the first Texas flag or not, this flag that uh, would have been designed by Lorenzo de Zavala. There's known as Zavala's flag. Uh, let's see. It seemed like there was one other thing I passed up kind of quickly here. Um, so they met. Oh, the other thing, just to make sure I didn't, you know, drew, I wanted to draw your attention to here is that the convention of 1836, you'll notice it is going on. All of this is happening. All these things they accomplished, those are happening while the Alam, the seizure of the Alamo is going on. Um, and then, um, at least up until, you know, March 6th, when the, the battle of the Alamo takes place and then that's over. And so the delegates have to hurry because they know that Santa Ana is coming towards them after that. After he leaves San Antonio, he's going to be headed further north, and the delegates at Washington on the Brazos would certainly be a prime target for him. Uh, and so they have to get out of there uh, as quickly as they can once they finish their business on March 17th. So that is the Convention of 1836.